On this episode, we'll talk about alcohol sugars. We'll also talk about protein intake without the protein shakes or supplements. And we'll talk about re-sleeving your sleeve. Welcome to episode 46 of the Ask Dr. A Show. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dr. Alvarez from endobariatric.com and uh, excited to be here uh, with really interesting questions you guys have been submitting and uh, great turnout with uh, the previous episodes that we did the live version of the Ask Dr. A Show in Atlanta. We're back here, back home at the hospital and uh, let's go into the show. What are your thoughts on sugar alcohols in relation to carbohydrates when choosing certain foods and or drinks? All right, so that was Anthony, by the way, using Snapchat. If you haven't added me on Snapchat, my username will be here on the screen. It's a great way to communicate. You got me directly to my phone right here. All right, so you can co connect my phone to your phone using Snapchat. By the way, it's super fun. It's really uh, fun to follow uh, my patients and former patients, future patients, and anybody interested in the gastric sleep. So to answer Anthony's question, uh, alcohol sugars are sugars that don't have as much impact uh, in the blood uh, regarding uh, uh, the levels of uh, glucose. So glucose, your blood glucose doesn't spike up as much with uh, alcohol sugars. So if you're doing, if you're counting carbs, you can actually sub subtract the amount of alcohol sugars to the total amount of carbs and get your net carbs, all right? So it doesn't actually count as uh, net carbs. You have to subtract that because they don't have that much impact on your blood sugar uh, as any other car carb, carb does. I have trouble drinking protein shakes or drinks. How can I protein in without it? Okay, so, uh, Protein intake without the protein supplements, without the protein shakes, without the protein bullets that, by the way, I mean, they're, they're kind of nasty. I mean, they, they, they don't taste good, all right? There are some supplements, though, that are uh, flavorless, orderless, that you can mix with some yogurt, that you can mix with some, uh, uh, some juice, uh, some broth, and that's a really good option. But let's say you simply just dislike them, dislike the supplements. So don't worry. Your body has enough reserves of the protein intake. Uh, you can have protein intake. Um, your body has enough reserves uh, of protein itself. You're getting protein. If you're doing even just phase one, let's say clear liquids, you're still, still getting some protein with the, 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 the chicken broth, the vegetable broth, the, the beef broth, etc. So, but let's say, we'll, let's talk about uh, protein intake down the road once you're eating. Drop, drop the supplements. You don't eat them, all right? You're still getting enough protein intake. You will not become malnourished regarding the, because of a lack of protein, all right? So uh, be sure you're, you make wise decisions though. I mean, go, go hit the protein first regarding food, pro protein and produce, all right? Protein and fo focus on that first. You'll be good, you won't be malnourished, you don't lack protein, and you don't have to be just drinking shakes and supplements all your life. Please understand this. Focus on the food you're intaking. Am I able to get a gastric sleeve redone if I haven't lost weight in a year? All right, we already talked about this subject about re-sleeving the sleeve. Uh, we can place uh, the link here so you can take a look at my response. But the thing is, can it be done? The answer is yes. Can we do it? Yes, we actually do it. Uh, not that frequent because we uh, make sure that the patient is a really good candidate for re-sleeving a sleeve. We make sure the patient is eating adequately. We make sure the patient is doing uh, all their effort and eating right and they're still not losing weight and their stomach is big. They, they left it big from the get-go. It was a back technique. 
It was a bad uh, sleeve from the, from the get-go, from the, from the beginning, from the first surgery. And then previous endoscopy and previous barium swallow to make sure how the anatomy of the stomach is. And then we can decide, you know what, this patient is a really good patient to re-sleeve the sleeve. Otherwise, don't look at it as an easy way out, as that I'm just stuck, I'm just maybe 10, uh, 20 pounds away from goal, I need to re-sleeve my sleeve. No, make sure you're doing good, eating correctly, making wise decisions, and otherwise, you probably didn't even lose anything. But if you lost 70 pounds, 80 pounds, and you're just so many or so much for, from goal, it's something that's you're, that you're doing that's, not, that's keeping you from goal. So analyze that first rather than uh, thinking it's the sleeve or you need to re-sleeve the sleeve. Again, people, there are some cases that the re-sleeving the sleeve is mandatory to help them lose the weight, all right? So be careful there. All right, so that was it for episode 46 of the Ask Dr. A show. I'm uh, really excited for, uh, for all the people that have been sending me their snaps, their uh, their messages, thanks so much, I really appreciate. I really appreciate the comments on the comments section here on YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, all right? I'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Alvarez from endobariatric.com where we are changing lives one sleeve at a time. Take care and God bless.